Welcome to my channel, I am GDP, and today we are going to be talking about the Void Arc in the Galactic Tree, uh, the two new features that have been released on the Void of Idle Heroes. Uh, it has been almost a full completion for just about most people. Most people should be just about finishing their first map or have started onto a second map already by finishing early. Um, me personally, I am going to be able to 100% my, uh, first map here, uh, that right there just enabled me to go to 100%. All my void nodes are completed or at least completed. They're, they're, they're at least filled up. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about some of the stuff that I've seen, uh, from the data mine and kind of like what the priorities, uh, people should be doing. Uh, first up out of the bat, um, I know some people have already done this be already, uh, but it is going to be a little bit unfortunate for them because they did this. Um, I don't recommend upgrading the collector workshop yet. You should save all of your um, little books here for the navigation compass when you go into your next map so you can go off into the second sector um, when you are in the navigation compass here the sector uh, determines on how much of the base mats you get um, but the void loads here these are the only things that the workshop actually increases um, but the upgrading sector increases every single other node so just a quick recap only the void loads are affected by this the collector workshop so collector workshop in a an investment terms of your little book things here um, are a pretty bad value compared to going to the next sector uh, so when you're doing your upgrades for your workshop you got to keep in mind um, does spending these resources provide me more resources, uh, potential, or can, I, or at least can I make sure I upgrade to the next map when it is available? Because upgrading to the next sector is going to be an overall increase in rewards compared to just upgrading the collector workshop. Um, I don't recommend going into the spaceship lab here. Um, these are only going to be helping you out for the void, the PVE and the PVP battles. I don't think people are really going to need these stats. Um, it might become useful later on down the road. Uh, but right now the general consensus is going to be avoid these, save all of your resources for upgrading your sectors first, and then your collector workshop around the same, kind of near the same time, but you're going to be going up your sectors before your collector workshop. Uh, Arcane Nexus, you can ignore for now. Uh, these cores are only, or these little resources, the 15 of them are only used for the PvE bosses, and you only need more than five if you can't one-shot the bosses. Um, in the data mine, uh, each map only has one PvE boss, so as long as you can kill it in one hit, you're not going to need more than five um, in the future sectors. If you can't kill that boss in one hit, if you can't kill it in three hits, obviously you're going to have to upgrade this. Uh, but for right now, most people are going to be able to kill this in one hit and you're only going to need five of these. So ignoring this is completely okay. So right now, general rundown is if you haven't spent your resources yet, do not upgrade the collector workshop go into the navigation compass and go into the next sector. The reason being is because of this table right here. Um, this table shows the mats that you can get uh, going in each sector. Um, and also keep in mind, your mats are increased by 15% if you have completed Broken Space of Seven, which most people have. And then also if you have bought the monthly card, you'll be looking at the red section which is a 30% boost from the base uh, for your resources. So you get a 15% from Broken Space of Seven, and then another 15% from purchasing the monthly card. Uh, so 
people that do have the monthly card do get more resources than people that don't. Um, moving on to the collector workshop upgrades here. Um, once again, these are only for the void loads. Your Innova Crystal production is going to be boosted by the Broken Space of Seven and the monthly card. So in the first level, it's not really 2,000, it's 2,600. And then for level six, it's not really 5,000. You're, you're going to be getting 6,500 um, if you have both the monthly card and Broken Space of Seven completed. Um, but yeah, so you're gonna be getting 125 of the ingots at maximum workshop in the void loads. But keep in mind that this is not priority because if you look onto the sector here in the PVE bosses and in the normal planets, basically every single explorer going into the sector upgrade is going to increase your ingot production far more than what the workshop potentially could. So keep that in mind is that sector does increase, sector upgrade does upgrade your mats far more than what Collector Workshop can do for you. Um, I'll leave this uh, table down in a spreadsheet. I have completed the spreadsheet pretty much. I am doing some uh, edits to it here and there eventually, but uh, down below in the description, there is a link to this spreadsheet um, so you guys can take a look at this. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, spaceship lab here the upgrades that you can get um, the cost of it uh, isn't too too high um, for the first tier to, to do both of the HP nodes it's going to cost 6438 or 3219 per each um, tier 2 is 4127 for it for each one or 8,254 total, and then tier three is 5,035 for each one, so the speed or the control immunity, and then 10,070 for both the speed and the control immunity, coming in for a grand total of 2,000, or uh, 24,762 total ingots to completely maximize the spaceship lab. Uh, but once again, I don't recommend this. Um, for a for the arcane nexus here um you are going to need uh 2650 for the first upgrade 3300 for the second 3950 for the third and then 4600 for the fourth and then the final ones could be 5250 coming in a total of 19750 ingots for maximizing the arcane nexus and then the collector workshop goes from 3950 30, to 4950 to 5950, 6950, and then 7950, uh, coming in at a total of 29,750 for completely maximizing your workshop. Um, and then obviously for the navigation compass, if you wanted to upgrade to all of the sectors, this could be 3,900 for sector two, 5,100 for sector three, Sector four is going to be 6,300. Sector five is going to be 7,400. Then sector six is going to be 8,600 for a total of 31,300. Um, so once again, Navigation Compass is going to be the priority for everyone with Collector Workshop as a second. Um, going into the uh, nodes here and the maps, uh, from the data mine, I have found that there are six different types of events that you can get. Uh, you got your void loads, your wrecked ruins, which are your eggs, your transcendence vaults, which give you your COT and stellar. You got your PvP battles, your PvE battles, and then you have your regular planets or the ones that you just click on and then they're already explored. You don't need to put any heroes in. Um, so out of those six types, each map has a specific number that they can get. Um, in the data mine, I did find that there was 45 total maps. However, uh, 30 of them are disabled. So only 15 of them are available. And every single one of those 15 only have 10 void loads, uh, 25 egg nodes, and 25 of the COT and stellar nodes, 
with three of the PvP battles and one PvE, and then each of the different maps have a variant different number of regular planets that you can, that you can explore. But so far, right now, everyone is going to have 10 void loads, 25 eggs, 25 chests, three PvP, and one PvE right now. Um, so no matter what map you get, you're always going to have that. Uh, so keep that in mind that right now the upgrading the workshop isn't completely needed because you're always going to be pretty much having the number of um, minerals that you need to put your heroes into those void loads because you're only going to see about 10 of those in each map. Um, the next upgrade at the cap of three is going to make that a lot easier to manage, uh, but it, you, you can manage it right now with two. Um, going into the egg nodes, you have a 95.5% to get materials and then another 4.5% to get an egg. And then in that 4.5%, I mean, you have a 1.5 for chaotic, 1.5 for entangled and a 1.5% for a somber. So overall you have a 4.5% chance to get an egg, but it's a 1.5% chance for each because it's evenly split of that 4.5. Um, so most of the time when you open up one of those egg nodes, it is going to be materials. The chances to get an egg are very low. Uh, but talking about the top of it, of eggs, the first time you ever open up an egg on your account. Um, so it doesn't matter if it's a chaotic somber or, um, forgot the other ones entangled. Um, it doesn't matter which one you open. You're going to be guaranteed getting a Protoss and then any other future ones aren't guaranteed. You're going to go to that pity timer. So it is recommended that you go in uh, and save your first opening for a somber egg. The reason being is this has a transcendence light and light uh, Protoss in those. And those are the two best out of all the other Protoss. Um, so you're going to want to kind of force open up one of those um it does turn out in the data mine that transcendence has a 0.1 percent higher chance uh to get a transcendence protoss versus a light or a dark so there is a slightly more odds in your favor for a transcendence protoss um now going further into the uh, eggs here, uh, there is actually a tooltip error in the um, game here. In the game here, it does say Stardust 80%, Evolution Materials 13%, and Star Spawn 7%. I did notice in the data mine that this is not correct. You actually have a 6% chance to get a uh, Protoss instead of a 7%. So we're so the game is actually um, overstating our odds a little bit for getting a Protoss in an egg it is actually 6% versus 7%. And you actually have a 14% chance to get materials versus 13%. Um, so the track number should be 80% Stardust. 14% for evolution materials and 6% for a star spawn or a nut or a protoss. So keep that in mind. This tooltip is wrong. You actually, your chances of getting a protoss are slightly lower than what is stated. It is 6% and it has been confirmed by the devs that it is indeed 6%. And I do believe they are going to be upgrade or updating this tooltip at some point in the future. Um, now talking on to protoss here, Let's go ahead and talk about what it costs to upgrade a uh, Protoss from level one all the way up to level 140. So to go from level one uh, to 140, it takes an entire uh, 658,860 of these uh, purple little star diamond crystal things. Um, and then at each level of level 20, level 40, level 60, level 80, level 100, and level 20, it costs another material to kind of like evolve the, the, the Protoss, kind of like a pet where every so often you have to use, um, you gotta, gotta unlock the next tier. It's kind of the same here. So at level 320 or level 20, you have to use 320 of these blue diamonds. Um, at level 40, you got to use 160 of these yellow diamonds. 
Uh, at level 60, you gotta use 80 of these purple teardrops. At level 80, you gotta use 40 of these little green fire things. At level 100, you gotta use 20 of these red stars. And then at level 120, you gotta use 10 of these yellow stars. Um, if you take a quick moment, these last two materials, the red one and the yellow one at level 100 and level 20, we have no idea where they are in the game. They might not even be available right now to us, but I did find these images uh, tied to these other materials in the data mine. And there was a point of six different upgrade cost and six different icons. So I put two and two together and figured these are the last two resources for level 100 and level 20, 120, and they're they're more rare, hence why they cost they, they require less of them to use at the upgrade. Um, going on to your next thing here, uh, your tree. So upgrading your little your your galactic tree here, you're going to get a monster damage bonus per level. This goes all the way up to 360 in this, as you can see in this table right here. At the very, very, very maximum level, you're looking at 1,422% damage on top of your pet. So you're looking at times 15.22. Um, of what your pet damage so pets are going to be hitting extremely 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 hard at level uh, 360 Glock tree here um, But that's going to take a really 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 long time to get because it's going to take nine million and 97,000 of these materials to get to 360 so it's going to take a really long time um, I didn't even put any numbers to it. I haven't done any math yet, but it's probably going to take at least a year, I would, I would imagine, to upgrade this. So it's going to take a while. Um, I think that's all that I have to really talk about in today's video. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. And once again, down below in the description, there will be a link to this uh, Google document that has all these tables that you guys can check out. Um, I am kind of updating it as I go, as I find out more information. So if you, so if you take a back and look at it, there might be something new in there. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one.